To talk about ISIL's efforts to recruit more Westerners into their cause, we head back to Australia, where Greg Barton joins us now from Melbourne. He's the director of the Global Terrorism Research Center. Let me start there in your country. Uh, we led with the siege in Sydney. This incident, of course, comes on the heels of a police raid in Sydney just a couple of months ago, which they claim thwarted an ISIL terror plot. First, your thoughts on the siege, and then give us your sense of the ISIL footprint there in Australia. Well, the siege, of course, has caught us by surprise that uh, the hostages should be taken. We were expecting a lone wolf attack along the lines of the Woolwich killing of uh, drummer Lee Rigby. Uh, we had that uh, alert back in September that prompted uh, police operation Appleby, the biggest in Australian history. But we were bracing ourselves for more such threats. We didn't expect the hostages to be taken. And there's obviously understandable sadness that uh, two lives of hostages were lost uh, in the early hours of this morning. Uh, but uh, it's comforting to know that this is a, a, um, a lone wolf. I mean, it, it, it almost certainly is a lone wolf terror attack. It is terrorism. But he wasn't part of a larger plot, wasn't part of a larger network. He was operating by himself. And uh, that's the good news. The bad news is other people will see what he's done and, uh, and try and do the same thing. And so we're likely to see this threat coming in future. Well, let me ask you about this uh, fatwa by ISIL, which was issued in September, which specifically called for lone wolves to go after Australians. Uh, here's the headline from one of the Sydney newspapers on September 23rd. Global terrorist fatwa calls on followers to kill Australians and anyone from the U.S.-led coalition. Australians mentioned several times in that fatwa. What's the sense there about what the government can do to combat this threat? And then get, take it further. You know, a lot of Western countries talking about this, France, the United States, uh, and ISIL's recruitment efforts. Yeah, ISIL's recruitment efforts pose a real threat to us. We've been worried about them taking the lives of our young people from our you know, suburban homes. That's happened in Australia. It's happened all around the world. Um, but it's not that the threat doesn't stop there. I mean, the, the threat is they use those same recruitment networks to turn attacks uh, back. And although this, uh, this gunman appears a very troubled, um, rather pathetic individual, in, in fact, he fits the profile of the sort of people that IS, uh, Islamic State's calling upon to reach out and attack. They offer a redemptive narrative. They say that your life has been a mess, but do this one, uh, quote, you know, courageous thing, and uh, you'll be a hero, zero to hero. Um, and we, we saw that with Montreal and Ottawa, apparently with some effect. We had an earlier case in Melbourne uh, with Numan Haider, whose passport was, was withheld, and he, and he lashed out in anger. Uh, apparently trying to kill the police officers he was greeting. And, and now we've had this new element of hostages being taken. Um, the good news is that Islamic State doesn't have a large footprint in Australia. There would be a few hundred individuals who might be sympathetic um, and who are actively recruiting. Uh, but in that, that, that group of a few hundred individuals, um, there's perhaps many more uh, who at some stage will come forward and attempt some sort of lone wolf attack, particularly when they see the success in getting international media attention that this attack in, uh, in Sydney has got. Uh, so, Greg, let me ask you this. Do you see the anti-ISIL coalition fighting uh, the terrorist group in Syria, Iraq? Is it creating or preventing these types of scenarios? Look, it, you'd have to say it, it adds to the risk a little bit, um, but I think the risk of not doing something is greater. We're not really going to be rid of this threat from ISIL until they're forced to retreat from the cities they occupy along the Euphrates and the Tigris in uh, uh, in Syria and Iraq. And that's a long, difficult challenge. It depends on the Syrians and the uh, Iraqis in the end. But I think we are right in joining with them and trying to defeat them there. But at the same time, we've got to fight them on, on this international front. We've got to fight the ideas, the power of attraction. And, and one of the things we want to be putting out uh, across communities is that there's nothing heroic or glorious about what this man has done. It, it's just criminal behavior. It's disregard for human life. Um, it, it's not a glorious deed at all. But Islamic State is trying to spin this idea that people whose lives don't amount to much who feel at their wits end can go out in a blaze of glory, and we've, we've got to combat that. Greg Barton joining us from Melbourne. Uh, thank you so much.